Welcome everyone to another episode of Taking Up Space, a Michelle Mayer podcast. Super excited about coming forward today. I have a thought-provoking word for y'all today and we're going to be speaking on relationships today. Yes, relationships. We're not going to be speaking to romantic relationships because I don't I'm not I don't feel as if I am worthy enough to give anyone in any advice on how to manage romantic relationships. I am working my way uh, in strength to mastering that myself, but I am able to use my experiences and my testimonies and what I've um, gathered along my own walk in life to navigate my way through this conversation and offer a perspective perspective up to you all on it. You know, I honestly believe we're all out here looking for the same thing. I mean, everybody wants to be happy. Everybody wants to find someone that they feel safe with that will um, accept them at face value for who they are. You know what I mean? Like, none of us come into relationships speaking all of our truths. We don't tell all of our, about all, any of our demons upon meeting anyone. We put our best foot forward and we, and we speak to our strengths. But we want to feel as if we, we, we're accepted. You know what I mean? Like we found someone that truly accepts us, that we feel safe with, that we feel as if we can show uh, the truest aspects of ourselves to and not be judged or condemned and all these types of things. And because of that, when we find those people, we treasure them, right? We hold them really, really dear. We love them even more because we know how rare it is to find somebody that really gets us. And even if you don't get me, that you love me anyway, with all my flaws and all my inadequacies, and even you love my strengths. But the fact that you could find someone to love you with your flaws, friend, even though they, they've been exposed and brought out to the light, you still love me because of them. Those are the, the factors that make you connect with someone. Loving me for my strengths, the world will love you for your strengths. But to find someone that can actually lay with you in all your mess, that's the part. And, you know, that's what makes it so difficult because a lot of times we don't lead with our, our weaknesses. We don't, we do as much as we can to hide our weaknesses from the world and from even family, let alone our significant other, someone that lives with us, someone that knows us in intimate ways that nobody else knows us. So, you know, what brings this conversation on is because, you know, I, I see people uh, on social media and in the world, just people that I know in conversations speaking to that there's no good man out there, that there, there's no good man in the world and, uh, and there's no good women and all these different conversations. And I'm thinking, I just don't believe that. I, I believe that if I am a good person and I consider myself to be a, value, a valuable person, I have many gifts that I can offer that will add value to environments. And I work diligently on cultivating these gifts and, and, and fine tuning them. And I know that if I am that type of person, I know for sure that there are other people out in the world the same way. And many of them I know. Some of my friends that I have these conversations with, I see their gifts so profoundly in ways that they don't even see. And I think this is the beginning of the conversation as to there are many of us out here looking for things that we first need to discover within ourselves. The fact that many people don't think that there are good men and women in the world, to me, speaks to the fact that you don't see yourself as such. You don't. You might, and I know that they would not agree with me. I know many of you watching this video will be like, I don't know, she, I'm, I'm losing her here. But if you think about it, you know, if, if, if all your past relationships are not your fault, the demise of them, if none of them were your fault, it might be you, friend. 
Because I know I'm going to even use myself as an example, friend. Relationships, I don't, I, I'm telling you, I can do so much better in love relationships. I, I'm, I, you know, I, I'm very particular as to the type of man that I'm attracted to and the type of man that I feel safe with. Okay. They're not always the flashy men and, and the men that have all the options. I don't go for those kind of guys. I go for the man that I can have conversation with and that I can forge deep emotional relationships with. Men that are not afraid to speak from the heart and be who be themselves with me and that require that of me. Not men, not superficial men that just want the you know, the surface level conversations and they want eye candy and they just want to feel, um, you know, praised and loved and all that kind of thing. But men that really want to know me, that really look to have a deeper level of intimacy, a deeper level of, of an emotional relationship. Those are the people that I really go for. And it doesn't matter. I mean, looks matter, but when you can get me on that level, looks are, it doesn't even really matter to me about a look. I don't really care. I don't. Because now it's a heart thing. You know. But when dealing with anyone, you know, it's hard to accept people and their flaws once they present themselves because the flaws are the things that people usually hide. You don't sell and project the flaws. So the flaws are things that you uncover after you begin the relationship. They could be personality flaws, personality traits that rub you the wrong way. It could be the way that you handle situations and you're like, oh, I just, I don't respect that. I can't. That was, you know, I don't, I don't like that character. That's a, that's a huge character flaw. Or it could be, I mean, it could be a number of different things that you, you need enough positives in the department of, in the non-negotiable department, the part, the department where, um, where the things live that you, you can't do without, they have to be so much stronger in, in, in those things and in, in that department to override the negatives that you find along the way. And a lot of times they're just, they're just not. A lot of times you get too many negatives along the way and it's like, okay, I, it's, this is complicating my life. And I, I know, you know, I've been walking my path for a while and, and I, I know my path pretty well. I might be better off by myself. I might, I might not need this. Uh, you know, I might, I might need to go back to doing this alone and, 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 and maybe try my hand again or something else. Sometimes it is like that. And, and it's not anybody's fault. It's not their fault. It's not, it could be your fault. You might just be too particular or you might just be too demanding in that sense or, or whatever. You might have some unresolved issues that as we all do, that we haven't healed from, that now you're reliving through this new relationship, whatever it is, the point is, is that everybody is not always, everybody else is not always wrong. And you're not always the victim. You're not always the one dogged out. If you're the one always dogged out by your ex, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But nonetheless, this conversation is to say, you know, a lot of times we look at the world and we say that there's not any good men or any good women out there. And I just, I just beg to differ, you guys. I, I don't believe that. I believe that there's just as many good men and good women out there are, as there are ones you don't want to invest your time in. It's, it's about the side of you that you show a person that makes them feel safe with you and that makes them want to pour into you. 
And that doesn't come with, everybody can't get that. Everybody can't get that from everybody. Right? Because we all come to the table with our experiences. So what I'm pouring in, what I'm, what I'm offering may not be what this person needs. And no matter how good he looks and how nice he smells and how much money he has or none of that, nothing that I offer him will get me the yield from him that I feel like I need. Because I might not be what he needs. But because a lot of times we we have our minds set on this particular one or this particular person or this particular way, we stick with it and we try to force our hand at it. And when it gets us nowhere, we're mad at it. When it's been consistently that way the whole time, it hasn't changed. It has consistently shown you that this is what, this is the most you're going to get out of me. This is the best you're going to get from me. You're the one that want me to give you that extra amount. I, I, I just don't have it for you. You don't do that for me. And without them having to say that, they're showing it to you. Or she's showing it to you. Or he's showing, you know. But nonetheless, these are the scenarios, or one at least one of the scenarios that could come into play. And, and, and because of that, we now are hurt and we see the world as having no quality people. I'm here to tell you, if you view, your, view yourself as a quality man or a quality woman, I'm here to tell you that then there's got to be someone else out there, friend, that's just as quality as you. Are you the only quality person in the world? It's just you.